Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm out on another walk. It's another day of lockdown. It's a Sunday today, and I'm walking again in my hometown of Worthing, uh, westwards. Um, we've got Tevil Gate, which is just up there into the sunshine, and what used to be Victorian houses and a few shops and before that um, I guess a green and a pond here at Tevil Gate is now and then in the 60s there was this god-awful uh, parade of shops they've knocked all that down in a car park I made a video about the terrible state of the car park and then they're building this rather grotesque building I'm not sure what that's for I don't know if it's going to be the tax office coming back um, but I thought I would just go and walk down some of the, the, the sort of Victorian part of Worthing today show you what it looks like on an early Sunday morning which is probably what it looks like on an early Sunday morning um, most of the time even when we're not in lockdown so we just get past through past these rather boring frontage glass plate glass things and get into some of the the more Victorian villas and um, terraced houses along here and have a look and see what we see we're very close to the railway station which is just to my right we might go up and have a look at that for those people who like railway stations And past, um, what is it called? The Vict, the uh, I forget the name of the pub that we're coming up to now. It's right opposite. I should know this. I pass these places every day. The Vic Victorian pub, Victoria. I can't remember. Anyway, um, I guess the train station is shut. It's much windier today, so I'm hoping there's not too much wind buffering on the old microphone, and. For those that haven't noticed, we put the clocks back. Uh, I only heard, because I don't really watch the television, and I wasn't listening to much of the radio, and I had this vague feeling that we were going to put the clocks back. Here we go. This is the pub. The Grand Victorian Hotel, there we are. It's funny, when you switch the microphone on and the camera, it's easy to suddenly start losing the words. We've got the station here, which isn't the original station. The original station is a little further down that way, and it's a much more humble little place. Oh, it's actually open. The station's actually open. And I can hear voices. But um, I'm not going in the station. Let's... Uh, pop back round this way. Probably when the station came in, I imagine that's when these, um, the, the original station came in, that's when a lot of these houses went up. I don't know, but I'm surmising because it would have obviously served the railway, the hotel. You can imagine people coming in, day trippers, people coming down to board, coming on holiday, perhaps commercial travellers staying at the Grand Victorian Hotel in its day, doing their business down here in Worthing and then shooting back up to London or wherever it is that they went. And Worthing is lucky because it does have a, a series of parks and yesterday I went through a couple of parks on the west side um, this time I'm hoping to get up to uh, a park on the east side. This is um, Tevil Road and it's usually very busy. It's a sort of rat run I suppose. You've got two parallel roads that run west in Worthing from the main drag down to the uh, from Broadwater to at the town centre 
and one is Mill Road which goes into Goring and th then there's this Tevil Road which also runs west as I say but uh, and you you take your pick really when you're you're driving through up there at the railway crossing and uh, Tesco's team doing their doing their stuff making sure there's food for everybody which is very good to see and I'm going actually I'm going up this way this is Clifton Road it's got an unusual bunch of shops up Clifton Road which are quite nice to to look at you've got here a Turkish cuisine I've never been in there and uh, a tattoo parlor next door you've got I don't know what that one is a photography shop something like that Clifton food and wine a cash and carry and then lots of the terraced houses that you have come to expect the Victorian period I guess around 1840 something like that was um, a massively industrial period for building houses and I often in some of my videos talk about the houses that we're building now the rabbit hutches and the uh, the the estates that really have no life other than just lots of housing a similar thing was going on back in the 1840s 1850s with swathes of open space being built on and lots of the terraced houses however I think back then when they were building them they didn't just build houses with no amenities they built churches they built church halls they put in shops there were pubs on each corner and it's interesting about the pubs because they often built on a stretch of road the pub first so that the brickies and the carpenters and the roofers and everybody working on the houses could go in at lunchtime and spend their money and that way whilst it may have taken however long five ten years to build these streets the pubs were able to trade coming into a another bit of worthing here with the park now this is Victoria Park if I remember rightly uh, don't often go down here but I used to cut through this park when I used to go and visit my dad who lives in Goring and I would walk down to Goring which is from my house about three miles more or less can you hear the roar of the the roar of the wind in the trees I imagine it's going to be a bit windy out there there's lots of pigeons but I am going to cross the green we've had so much water at the earlier part of the year that I reckon this must have been quite soggy for a while but uh, at the moment with all the sunshine and dry weather we've had it's all dried out which is magnificent behind me another beautiful row of terrace houses and I actually quite find those houses very charming and I think if you'd lived here as early residents with the park in the Victorian period it must have been very nice to come out onto this green and you know with your perambulators and what have you and chat to people it must have been very very pleasant and I suppose with the mass housing going on during the Victorian period it's the first time I know there were Victorian slums and people always correct me on that that the houses of course were not like we have them now with wonderful carpets and great furniture uh, soft furnishings and heating other than they would have obviously had the coal fires but it was probably the first time people had substantial housing apart from those who had a lot of money you think of the railway workers and there's lots of beautiful railway workers terraces and it must have been the first time as I say they 
there was substantial um, housing. I'm just trying to work out where I'm going now because I want to show you something else. We shall walk through this little alleyway here. I once had a friend of mine's dog called Lola, which was a, a little dachshund, and I was looking after it whilst the owner was away. And I took it for a walk down here, and at the end of this, I took it off its lead, expecting it to dive, dive into the park. <clears throat> it turned round and ran straight into the road. And fortunately, no cars were there. I mean, it was an ordinary day, obviously, and cars were belting around. Right, I'm going to turn right here on Cowper Road, and we are going back where we came past many nursing homes here, care homes for the elderly. But it's nice to see a little bit of the the blossom coming in and this is one of the things that I I guess with the lockdown that we're missing spring look at that there's a lovely care home beautiful care home now but of course these back in the day were rather wonderful villas people who had made their money in the town used to move out and build or have built much larger properties on the on the profits they had made and so that's why you see many of these larger properties with spacious gardens away from the main town center where originally businesses had been built and people lived above their shops or uh, next to their warehouse or what have you. That's a, a Mini. And that's the first car I've actually seen driving about. Some of these, though, these are, this is a pretty much a specially built care home. I wonder what it's like inside the care homes. That must be quite worrying at the moment. Quite a concern with different staff coming in. I know how awful um, it was when my father was in his care home. He died of dementia. Well, this is the funny thing, isn't it? It wasn't dementia that killed him. He actually starved to death. But it was the dementia that told his brain that he wasn't hungry. And as a result, he eventually starved to death and refused to take food and just got poorer and poorer. We just come round here. There's a couple of things I want to show you before we end our walk. There's a gentleman coming up with his dog, so I'm just going to take a respectable distance and come out. Oh, he's diving in there. Morning! That is one of the sad things about this, is that you see someone and you start to be very suspicious, don't you? Because you don't want to get too close to them in case there is something. Now, what have we got here? Opening soon, brewhouseandkitchen.com. I wonder if that is actually going to happen now. Uh, sign up, gin masterclass, now recruiting. There, a, a brew pub, it says. That now, there used to be a lovely country pub in here over the wall. I went in there once for a meal with a client, funny enough, when I was doing some corporate video making. But that's gone. And I imagine that will perhaps not recover quite as easy as they think, depending on how long this goes on for. Beechwood Hall, that was the name of the place. Eat, drink and stay. Set in its own, I don't know what acreage that is. About 10 acres, oh, I don't know, no idea actually. Five acres, something like that, a little bit of ground. 
Right, we're heading back down to, this is, um, well, it's not quite Mill Road. <coughs> Mill Road starts around the corner, but it's the road that was parallel to uh, Tevil Road that I started on. And now I've walked into a little park. And this is a lovely little haven that I wanted to end on on this walk. It's a lovely little haven. I don't know the full history about this. I gather, I mean, to me, it reminds me of a, a little bath, if you will. You've got these splendid Georgian properties up ahead. And there must have been for the rich, obviously, and the well-off. And there they are. And I believe it was going to be a crescent. But if I pan round here, you'll see that actually it never got finished. And I believe they ran out of money, the developers, which is a shame because it is very grand. Complete with its own rather special entrance gate, which is what I'm going to get to before we end the video. Beautiful property. A little bit tired now, I need another lick of paint in places, but um, it is rather magnificent. And sadly we don't build like this anymore, which is very much a great shame. And their own little park behind me, stretching out, so again you can imagine that the much richer class coming out to perambulate and chatter and meet in the mornings and then through their rather grand entrance gate here which reminds me of the sort of entrances you see in London and I imagine it's the London set that would have come down here the ex-colonels and so forth would have come down here to retire and so it's like a little London I guess it's like a, a Bedford Square type thing or a mini bath in Worthing, Park Crescent. And there it is. Well, that's my walk for today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And all this is very local within a square mile of where I live. So I haven't, for those naysayers who say stay indoors, I haven't actually been out. And you've noticed I think two or three people in the whole of this time I've walked. It can be done. Take care. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.